Great, we are live. So it's an honor for me uh, being here with uh, Timo Tolki. It's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for being in this interview with me, Kim and Turok. And um, yeah, as I said, it's been a pleasure because I grew up with uh, classics like Visions or episode of the mm -hmm. Great Records from the 90s. So again, thank me you for, for being, being here. So uh, before starting with the music, um, how was this uh, lockdown period, which we, are, we still are in a way? So well, what did you do? What was this lockdown period for you? Everything's the same for me. I don't. Re I don't, I really don't uh, let it to affect me in any way. You know. Uh, I mean, I wake up in the morning, I do my things. I don't, I don't think about the fuck. But, you know, that's how I do it. Because, you know, If you human beings, when we place attention to something, it starts to grow. And look what's I can't hear you properly, Tim. It's like you're cutting. I don't know if it's my problem or your Everybody problem. Um, I can I can't hear you properly. It's like you're cutting out. Um, uh, it's uh, maybe a connection thing. Um, I don't know if it's me or or you because I I can't hear anything right now in this moment. And I lost you. I think I lost you. Okay, guys, in the meantime, we're trying to connect. So if you want to say hi in chat, please free. feel free to do it. Sorry, guys, we have some technical issues in here. In the meantime, I say hi to some of you. Ciao, Andrew. Ciao Mauro. Yeah, we share the love with Mauro for uh, Visions. Great, one of my favorite records, power metal records. Yeah. Let's try to see what happens. Let's try again, maybe. Try again. Yeah, Check one, okay, two. man. It's your internet, not mine. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was you. You disappeared from my window. Ah, you disappeared from my window. Really? Yeah. We both disappeared. Okay. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> that's, that's weird. Not, yeah. That's not supposed to happen. Yes. Never happened to me, to be honest. So. I think it's my fault. I have this. I have this electricity. Electricity thing you know i break things okay. with energy yeah well, whatever happens Let, let's try and to um mm -hmm. uh, so, so sort of un understood what, what you said but not 
not fully. So you, you yeah, said yeah. that you were waking up anyway every day as usual, right? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So I don't. I can't hear you. I can't see you. Hi, Aaron Smith. I, I can't hear you anymore if you're listening to me, Tim, or sorry. I don't know what's happening. I think my connection is working. But uh, you blocked totally. It's like you are, you froze. And I don't know what to do. Yes, Mauro. <laughs> Guys, can you tell me if it's me or if it's him? Because to me, it's him, but to, for him, it, it's me. So I, I don't know what to do. I, I feel like the connection here is working. Okay, let's try again. Started my phone. I restarted my phone, so maybe it's okay. Maybe it's better now. I don't know. I hope. I hope. In this moment, it's perfect. Ah, ah, oh, ah. Yes. Check one, two. Check one, two. One, two. And now you're so, like yeah, freezing. The, the pandemic. Our favorite. Sorry, Timo, I can't. Can you move somewhere else, maybe? Uh, if you have maybe clo closer to the router. Can you give me one minute? And I, I hook up the Wi-Fi because I'm in data here. Okay. Uh, say again. Sorry, I can't hear you properly. Try to. Uh, I don't know if you hear me. I can't. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Mauro, Timo, Hammerfall. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that, that's a good question. That's a good question, Mauro. If we have time, because it's already. Let's see how to stream. Now I'm, the, now I'm on the Wi Fi, so it should work. Ah, I wasn't on the Wi Fi. Okay, that was probably it. It's data problem. That has never happened here. It's a high quality Finnish Elisa data. I have no <laughs> idea why. Okay. <laughs> Amazing now. Okay, so yeah. take three, pandemic. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think it take four. <laughs> take four, take four. I mean, I said that I refuse to subscribe to this media ridden fear, you know, that spreads that because, I mean, there's been like, um, I think, I mean, there's like, uh, 75, 80% of the cases have recovered without vaccination. But for some reason, the, the newspapers and the media are not saying that. 
you know, only how many people died, which is like three and a half million. Very unfortunate. Sorry about that. But 75 million people recovered. I totally that agree. Versus with you. three and a half. Yeah, you know. So totally agree with there's something you. really weird. Something really weird there, you know. That's We've had SARS one. We had SARS one. We have flu. I mean, there are more flu people dying in normal flu. Absolutely. You know? So, so why, why, why is this hyped like this? You know, to me, I it's have no more. Idea. So that, yeah. We we live and die, right? So we die for a certain reason. It's like we can't yeah. die for this, but we can die for all the other reasons uh, that yeah. even the normal Anytime. society builds. Anytime, exactly. I do think that um, this is just a small reminder from Mother Nature. You know, yeah. Small. I mean, beggars are coming. And one thing is for sure, this will never go away. We will have to deal with this. You know, there's never ending chain of uh, of uh, mutations. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, let's focus on the music right now. So we. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, uh, I guess we can focus on your uh, next album, which is a solo album. It's called Union Magnetica, out yes. in October, if I'm right, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, uh, November. November. Okay, sorry. Yes. Um, so first of all, why the title? It's uh, I'm curious about the the title first because you have it months before. So I had it like uh, I had it like uh, a year. Oh already. wow! Yeah, I mean that is like a long, long story. But this basically is what it is: magnetic union. You know, because we are energy and we are constantly attracting conditions and other people. You know. And, and this is like, I'm a very spiritual person. So this is um, something to do with this. I cannot tell more, but I can tell that the whole album is like a trip, you know, okay. to a certain part of my life. Wow. Okay. I'm curious now, even more yeah. than I was before. <laughs> very good. <laughs> so there's, the, there, there, there's only one problem. I have no songs yet. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I've been... Almost, I've been five weeks now going on and off to this countryside place outside Helsinki. It was like 40 kilometers, 30, whatever. And there's nothing there. It's like so silent. There's uh, only you, you only hear your own voice, you know. Yeah. And um, it's, um, I'm there in this cabin with a guitar in my hand, you know. And I sit there and I'm like, I feel the resistance, you know. Because the bar is so high, the bar is so high. So I have this has never happened to me before. I've been writing like four hundred songs, you know, in my career. So, but I know at the same time I know it's a process. So I have to go through this, whatever it is. Because on the other side there is a lot of good things, you know. I do have one song title. Okay, can you tell us? Can I tell you? Yeah, I can, I, I can say it's, it's called Keepers of the Light. Okay, great. It's a very spir spiritual title. It can be. And it's um, uh, it's about, um, I don't even tell yet, because, you know. But this is, uh, I think it's going to be, because I think it's going to be like, uh, I'm going to release at least one song for free in, in November, plus a video. And then, I think it's probable that the record comes out a little bit later, maybe January, you know, around that time. Because I really, I'm really going to take my time with this one. It's kind of make or break record for, for my career because it's out of the record companies, out of Spotify, out of Apple, all these things. I'm not saying nonsense. Okay. I didn't say that. Okay. I didn't say, I didn't say nonsense. <laughs> So um, talking about this, we are in, um, uh, yeah, Mr. Jack Bonique Record is a good friend of Given to Rock, so yeah. we are in a good relationship. So uh, it, it's great to have you with him. It's a good combo. I have, yeah. um, it's a very good, very cool guy. So why did you choose him and Bonique Records? Actually, he chose me. Okay. <laughs> Well, it was this guy sending me stuff in the messenger, like a lot of people do. And, and he, uh, 
he was just really, really um, saying that, you know, whatever you want, I guarantee, you know. And nobody has told me this before. So I'm like, okay, wow. I started to think. And then this, this idea to release it outside of the record companies and whatever was there. And then the guy appears, you know. Yari. Is it really him? Yeah, it's Yari. Oh, wow. Hi, Yari. Fuck off. Oh, wow. fuck off. <laughs> he's a friendly, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Friends. Uh, we call almost every day. He's in Norway and he's fishing, probably. Okay, while he's chatting with with us. Yeah. <laughs> you got time when you when you yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great fisherman. He gets some ah, big yeah? fishes, yes. I think he's a better to to hunt fishes than playing bass. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good compliment for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows how good he is. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so it's a good link to talk about the um, guests. Yeah. That you, you will have. Well, Yari will be there. Jens Johansson will play the keyboards, you know. There's a plan to have Alex Landenburg play the drums, you know. And so far, I've talked to Ralph Sheepers for the vocals and, and Rob Brock and Katarina Nix. But uh, that, I don't know because I have no songs. So Okay. So that's so my change. Yeah, I compose first. And then you, based on what you compose, you you call the right person? Exactly. Excellent. Okay. Do you know musically where you're gonna go? I have no idea. Th th that's good. Th that's great. It's yeah, a I mean, I have to. I have to say because when I and I have to say this when when I heard this new Halloween, not completely, but snippets and stuff, I really could see that. I think that they really thought to make that record for the fans. Yeah. Whereas I'm like the kind of guy I never make any record for my fans. <laughs> Okay. Every song I ever wrote, I wrote to myself. You know? Okay. That's I, I have to I have to please myself in songwriting. So I, I don't write music for my fans per se. And then, you know, obviously some people like that. So then that's a great compliment, of course. But then live concerts are totally different. Then I play exactly what they want. Yeah. You know. Because as an artist, I cannot base my existence to what other people think. I cannot do that, you know. I would be fake for me, totally. So that's very interesting. And no matter what we do, there is some people who's gonna like it and some people who's gonna yeah. hate it anyway. So it's better to I, I, I don't know you can hate music. You know, how can you hate music? You know, there are a lot of haters nowadays on the internet. Yeah, but do they really hate music or something else? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't understand these people. It's like sometimes I do chats so, uh, and they, they say, I hate you, yeah. I hate you. Yeah, it's not, okay. I think it's just a global problem. But I, I'm a music lover. I love songs. So I don't care if it's Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears. I know I'm, I'm digging my grave here, but you know, I, I am really, I like, if I hear a good song, it is a good song. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. So, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, but my record's not going to be Britney Spears, that's for sure. <laughs> maybe you, know. you can call her to see if she wants to sing or I dance. Don't, I, I, don't, I don't want, I know where I don't want her on my records. <laughs> I was curious about uh, asking you something. Is that, considering that we're talking about uh, composing and everything, uh, yeah. is there any song that you consider underrated, something that uh, you wrote and you say, oh, this is a very good song and it didn't have a good um, um, reception from the audience or mild not, reception. Not really a particular song, but I would say Elements 1 is kind of underrated because it's not following the typical power metal, whatever that is. Yes. Lines, you know, so that's more artistic, more, more whatever. So it's, I, I don't label stuff, man. I don't do that. I really don't. I don't even know what it is. I have no idea what power metal is. I don't think Stratovoice ever was power metal. You know, I think and it's much more. I think it's much more than that. Yes, yeah, much more because you you added your touch. I think power metal is double bass and yeah. BPM high BPM. Well, yeah, that's Strato. But then we have mid tempo songs, ballads, a lot of other stuff too. So if that's power metal, then we are. But I don't. I don't care what it is. I mean, I, I write songs. <laughs> that's what I do. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, will you play? Well, you, <laughs> you haven't recorded the songs yet, so you, yeah. I'm talking about the live activity, but it's hard to ask you the live activity. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of things. I mean, I did seven gigs in Mexico before I came to Finland. You know, okay. That's the only country that we can tour at that time. You know, because those guys don't care. Okay? <laughs> They, they, just really want don't, to have they don't care. I mean, in there, you go to a restaurant with a mask, and then you take it off right away when you go in. Okay, great. There's, so there's it, no social distancing in that country at all. Okay, they're still and alive. That, some of them. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like 120 million people, so, and I guess it's enough. You know, but now they are booking more gigs. It's going to be like 12 gigs more in Mexico than. I think three or four or five in Latin America. Then I think 15 in the States, in America. And then next March, full Latin American tour. You know? Yeah. But it's a lot of touring, it seems. And I thought, I'm, I mean, I thought I'm, I'm almost there. And suddenly these gigs are coming. So. <laughs> wow. Wait, yeah. What's your favorite country in terms of live music going there that you enjoy the most? For it's whatever. Be, well, uh, I cannot say uh, one country, but I would say Latin America because those guys are crazy. Yeah, they really are. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I remember those. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember like in Brazil, we played like six and a half thousand people, and when you're like two hours of metal, and that's so much energy coming to you, you know, it's, it's madness. And then yeah. you go to a hotel, hotel room alone. They're like. <laughs> There's nothing there. So the That's why there is no cliche by rock stars <laughs> smashing stuff in hotel well, rooms, right? I would say certain guys in Stratovars did that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> certain. There is a good I question. It, I'm, I'm I, I think that, that, that guy has something to do. His, his, I think his name started with J, but it's not Yarri. <laughs> There is a good question talking about live music. Uh, Mauro is in Italian, but I translated for you. Yeah. Uh, you played with the Hammerfall in 98, 99. And if you share some great memory of Gods of Metal 98 and touring with Hammerfall. I think Hammerfall was like 2006. OK, I, I, trust, <laughs> I trust you in that. I don't think, I think 98, 98 was, I think it was, I think it was a Rhapsody. OK. I think it was Rhapsody. Maybe it wasn't it was a good sort of article. Yeah, it gotta be that. I mean, there was a very nice memories. I mean, we play uh, that was the one I think with, with Black Sabbath and Tantera. So wow. we are finishing the set. We have six minutes left, and they cut our set. So I'm like, uh, I go to run to the stage manager, which was a woman, and, and and we could hear from the radio stage radio cut these sons of bitches off. Wow. So that we later heard was Pantera's management. And, and I was so pissed off that I broke my guitar. You can see it in YouTube. It's like, okay. it'd be like, Phew. okay. Apart from that, always a pleasure to play in Italy. I mean, I have only good memories. Even that is a good memory because people saw that. And they, of course, these guys, the Pantera guys were fantastic. I mean, we, we met all of them, even Dimebag. So Jens just stole their beer. So they were like, a little bit pissed off. <laughs> <That'd be bad. laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you, who's the coolest guy of the metal scene? Uh, we were talking about Dunbeck Darrow. He seems a very cool guy. Yeah, yeah. Coolest guy in metal. I mean, is there any? I don't know. Who? I don't know. I mean, oh, you I, don't know. Okay. I met so many people. I mean, I. Uh, yeah. I, I cannot say. I mean, I met so many. You know, and yeah, most yeah. of them are very nice. You know, most of them, most, most, most of them, of course. Yeah, mo <laughs> most. Do you, Do you want to say something bad about some of them? I don't want to say anything bad about anyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I tried. Yeah, you know, big titles. <laughs> I gotta give you credit. <laughs> um, uh, talking about guitars, um, uh, I, I'm in love with guitars. What? what 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 happened? I don't have guitar at the moment. You don't have it no. at the moment. No, you have plates, but not guitars. No, I have. I I lend a guitar 
for my friend. An acoustic guitar and electric guitar. And okay. I have some I have some gigs there. I'm gonna buy a guitar, but I don't know which one because I'm really bored of guitars, you know, because I played like 48 years. Yeah, that's true. So I know what I'm doing so totally, but the instrument wise, I, I I'm not the right guy to talk about guitars. Okay. Or, no, or I, guitar I was... players even. Guitar players are the most boring people on earth. Why that? Because they think they're God's gift to mankind. Okay. So. <laughs> Mostly. So you're not um, experimenting, you know, trying to play the same thing, but with another guitar, with another brand. You don't, you don't, you couldn't care less, right? I don't have to because I sound the same. You know, whatever I play, if it's an instrument or amplifier, I sound the same. Because you're the your touch. It's seventy percent, seventy-five in the fingers. The way you okay. play. So, I saw you recently I, playing with a Stratocaster. Which is kind of unusual for yeah, you, yeah. For, at least for me. I started with Strat when I was 14. Yeah. You know, my mother bought, bought me this Fender Stratocaster and I slept with that. I had it in my bed. Wow. It's true. It's true. So, yeah. and I had many Strat Stratocasters in my career. And I, it's a really great instrument, but the, the pickups are not usually good. So you have to change a little more powerful pickups. Yeah, for Rambaker. Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah. There is a, uh, is there a musician who would you like to play with maybe in your next record or in general, you know, someone who really, you know, you, you said, I want to play with this guy, but you never had the chance. Max Martin. Max Martin? Yes. Uh, sorry. I'd, I'd... I would love to meet the guy and I would love to talk to with the guy. I would love to play with the guy. This is a guy who wrote all the hits of Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, Celine Dion. He had 25 top one hits in Billboard 100. He's the biggest songwriter of all time. Okay, I didn't know the name, sorry. Yeah. He's Swedish. Okay, so you, you want to uh, you want to talk about him or you want him to write you a song? I would write, I would like to write him a song. You know, okay. That's what I would love to do. But in all the other people, I would really love to play with Richard Blackmore because that guy is the reason why I play guitar. You know? Okay. So you grew up with when him? I, when I started, oh, yeah, I mean, I was like 12, 13, you know, I heard Smoke on the Water, and that was the first thing, you know. It was a live version yeah. of the radio. So he, yeah. I never met him, by the way. I really tried many times because Jens is playing with Rainbow. Okay. Uh, Jens plays keyboards in Rainbow, so I, I don't think it's going to happen, but I, I hope. I met Ronnie Dio, so. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. Cool guy? Is a good, uh, was he, was a, he was a cool guy, and there was it was in Tampere, in, in Finland, in a festival, and there were like people queuing uh, to meet him before the show, and there's one guy before me asking him, how can you sing like that? You know, you know, you know what he said? Because I'm so good. <laughs> that was his answer. Genius. I, I think he just got tired of hearing it all the time because he was a really powerful singer. I mean, and he was a short guy, like 162. Something. Yeah. And I'm 192. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, where but are you, you where are you, Ronnie? You know. Yeah, we miss him. One of the greatest voices. Yeah, I mean, I was in, in the, I was in Houston on the day he died, actually. You know, it was all over the news. So yeah, a stomach cancer that nonsense. You know. Yeah, too bad. So um, I'm. Uh, I told you that I'm, I'm Italian, but I'm based in UK. What do you yeah. like about Italy and UK? It can be something like food or other stuff oh, from the countries. The wine. <laughs> the pasta, especially ah. bolo bolognese, and I, I can make um, great bolognese myself. Ah, oh, really? Yeah, very good. No, not very the sauce, good. right? Not the sauce that you buy the jar. Well, you, you can, make it. No, no, I make it. You, you guys call it ragu. Yeah, ragu, yeah. Yeah, ragu, yes. So I can do ragu. Okay, great. And okay. I love Rome. Venice. Venice is absolutely cool, you know, the yeah. architecture and all the things. And I mean, I've been around, so I, mean, I was in Mantova when I was in this Vision Divine. 
I was producing oh. two albums for them. So the Mantua was really beautiful, actually. But the, every, I mean, Tuscany, of course. Yeah. Tuscany is wonderful. Bro. Yeah, wonderful. Yes. About UK, London? I was there a couple of times, but I thought it's like a third world country. Why that? Then, I mean, and maybe it was the venues because there were, the showers were like horrible and that everybody oh. seems to heat with coal. Do you Which remember is, the venue? Because I've been in every venue in London. I there think. were many. The first one was Underworld. It was horrible. Yes, I know that one really well. Yeah, but it's there a was, small one. Yeah, but there were two more. One was some opera. looked like opera house. Almost like red. I don't remember the name. but um, Or two Shepherd's Bush, maybe. Yeah, exactly. I think it was that. Yeah. I, think, I mean, I, I could see that uh, the houses are being heated with coal. You know? Yeah. That's something that would never happen in this country. It would fucking die in winter <laughs> you know it's like minus 35 even 40. So my my record is minus 42. okay you know eyelashes eyelashes were frosty <laughs> yeah yeah i was working you know because at that time i was working in a so-called respectable job i was yeah. copying discats <laughs> in, in uh, what's your we, we, we were talking about backstage backstage do you remember yeah. one, the, the best backstage? I'm, I'm really curious about backstage, what happens there or what you can request, you know, when you are very popular at the moment, maybe you can request something crazy and they will provide it. Well, we never did stuff like that, but we had this comedian in the band called Jens and he was very entertaining. So this particular story is from Budapest, 2000 Infinity Tour. He blew up a toilet with the pyrotechnics. So he, he had an idea wow. you know, with pyrotechnics. So he had this, he put the pyro, he puts it on, on the toilet, he flushes it down and at a road in Django, he uh, filmed it. And you can see it, it's in YouTube. It's this Infinite Visions documentary. Okay. It's included in there. So that was like okay. the horrible bang. It's totally destroyed the whole toilet, you know? <laughs> and this guy, this guy had also, he always had a, like crow bar saw and a hand puppet and gas horn. <laughs> and he used to, every backstage, he was sawing a piece of uh, wood from the door. So at the end of the tour, he had like 50, 60 pieces of wood. So what we did was we had to set up, set up a called damage account to Jens. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and most of the time he didn't have to pay because he's a super intelligent guy. So he always weaseled his way out to pay, you know. Mike said, I remember the toilet yeah, yeah. video. Hi, Mike. <laughs> so, you know, that's that really happened. But there are many stories. But we never had the stupidity, like, you know, M at M without brownies, brown, whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think you want to do that really, because there are people working hard you know, for that. So, yes, I agree. Mm. Uh, one last question from Mauro How did you come up with the cover of? Uh, Visions album and why Nostradamus? That's the thing is that Eric Michael told me this like six okay. months ago that um, it was after episode tour. Uh, I told the guys that I'm gonna write a follow up now, follow up album. So then Eric said to the other guys, he probably goes to some goes to some cabin in the woods to write. I don't remember where I was, but this is. What he told me that happened in, after one and a half days, I texted the guys that the record is ready. So I, <laughs> I wrote the Vicious album in one and a half days. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. It can, it can happen if you are really inspired, you know. Okay, yeah. It can happen because I write very quickly. I mean, most of my songs come in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Okay, get, so you I get, got I get, yeah, yeah, I get complete songs. You know? Wow, this is a funny story. We have we have time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, there was this um, com contest called Idols here in Finland. I, I was I always thought it's kind of nasty because they were laughing to the singers and stuff. So Warner Music Finland asked me to write a song. This guy called Ari Koivunen, who was like a young young metal guy a ballad so they gave me like four weeks one month to do that so i'm like uh okay i'll do it so then this guy this uh 
Peter Eklund, you know, he's like a guy who was working at that time. He calls me every day, like, is it ready? Is it ready? I'm like, no, I have a month. You know, so then one week, nothing, two weeks, nothing. It starts to get nervous. Three weeks, nothing. Three and a half weeks, nothing. Last day, nothing. So I waited one month, and then he calls me in the morning. Is it ready? I said, well, I just woke up. You know? and like, Is it the last day? <laughs> and then I go to, like, I make some coffee, and I still, like, well, I'm a really good procrastinator. So I'm, uh, you know, and then, and finally at 1 p.m., I go to my keyboard. And this song took seven minutes to write. Wow. With lyrics, with lyrics. With li <laughs> yeah, the it's, whole song with lyrics, yes. How can you write, I mean, practically seven minutes, including the, including the no, lyrics? The, the song is like five and a half or something, but, you know, I have the original demo somewhere about singing and playing, you know. Wow. The thing is that there is no how. I have no method. I don't know how. I mean, I just write songs. You speed it out. I don't speed it out. I just, uh, I think I'm connected to some higher force, you know, okay. that I receive because I cannot explain this in any other way. How can you get complete songs? You know, not that I compare myself to something like Beethoven, but Beethoven was known to receive complete works. He just wrote them down and there are manuscripts. There are no corrections, no correction whatsoever. Okay. Just full thing. That's interesting. He's like dictation. <laughs> Yeah. So when you are open, when you know yourself, uh, when you trust yourself, when you have self-confidence, and you love the thing, that can happen. You know. And obviously, visions is ten songs. And if you count ten songs times ten minutes is hundred minutes. It's like one and a half hour. One and a half. You know. It's not much. Yeah. So. But now, I mean, I, I have no songs. That's inspiring. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very, very interesting situation that I, I go there every day and nothing is coming out. You know, and I know there are a lot of people that think my career is over. Well, it is not. It's, it's just the beginning, actually. There's a lot of stuff coming from me, you know. That's good to I'm hear. Planning, yeah, I'm planning to do a musical, full musical. And I think part of this block now is, is because of this musical, because I think some of it will be born at the same time, you know. Because I, I saw like Tarzan, which is like Phil Collins, sorry, Sir Phil Collins, in, in <laughs> Hamburg, Hamburg, and it was amazing. I mean, the way they used use the stage and everything. So I was like blown away totally. And I love this. I love the songs from that. Really cool. And people loved it too. So. So you started working on this once, or not yet? It's just an idea for now. Me mentally. Mentally, OK. Because mentally, you're there. Yeah, I saw some interview like 10 years ago where I talk about musical. So I, I must have had it a long time in, my, in me. And it is yeah. all in me. My music is in me. You know, everything is in me in this. So I have to just express it, you know, just. <laughs> That's very interesting. Yeah. It's very inspiring. And then I have a last question for you. I was curious about, uh, because you were singing at the first period of uh, Stratovarius, yeah. you were the singer. So see. will we hear you back, maybe in this record? In... Well, a lot, yeah, a lot of people are asking me that. I mean, there was a reason why I stopped singing, because I really just wanted to have a great frontman like Cody Pelton. So that was really the reason. You know, we needed a guy like him, and we, um, I just had a lot of difficulties playing live and, and singing, you know, because I'm not like him or this Kiske or this guy. They're like really trained singers. They can do it so easy. I was always struggling with it. I have no training. I have no idea how I do it. And I only started singing back in 87 because I, uh, there was nobody else to do it. So I said, okay, I can give it a try, and then. We went sort of from there and we did like three records before yeah. Kimo came. So. Yeah, I have those. Yeah, Dream yeah. Space and stuff, Twilight Time. I mean, yeah. Friday night we recorded and mixed in four days. Wow. The whole thing. And then Twilight Time, we had luxurious 10 days. <laughs> and something like Elements was like two months. 
So that's like, you know, where it went. Well, what did you do in two months? Because you, you write so fast that... <laughs> That was a different thing because that that album was really complicated because they were like the basic songs probably were born really fast. But they're actually YouTube demos. I was just listening with my vocals. And that's a really funny. It's like na 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 na. It's not melodies are like this. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I presented the demos to the Stratovars guys, they were like, "Is that it? <laughs> is that it?" And yeah, it is because as a producer, I hear the final thing. You know, I, yeah. I know how it's going to sound. But yeah. they don't, they never did so. But they trusted me and they gave me this you know, production. I could do that, so. But it is really, um, what was the question? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to. No, it was yeah. about you like, singing. Yeah, the singing. I mean, I might sing a track on the new album, but really, it really depends on the, of the material totally, so. Yeah. Timo, it was, uh great honor again thank you to have you here and thank you for your time and thank you for all your music thank you for everything and yeah looking forward to union magnetica yeah i hope to um, like it. yeah um again thank you thank you to the guys who are writing questions but i i can't keep timo here for for the entire night sorry if we didn't answer your questions but Thank you again. Have a great night and always rock and roll. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Bye bye.